Hello, this is Michael Gillen. Today I'll be doing a review on capture cards, specifically these two capture cards that I got on eBay. I'll be explaining the difference between these capture cards and the Elgato HD60S type capture card and what to look out for when buying these types of capture cards, what false advertising you should check for and be able to discern. I got this capture card for $8 and this one for $7 on eBay. As you can see right here, it's $7 on eBay. You can just buy them. There's a regular Type A version or a Type C version. There's also a lot of, a lot of different ones right here. As you can see over here is $6, so that's even cheaper. And there are many options out there. Um, over here, you see different types. This one looks like it may have uh, some more features, and I'll explain those features in just a minute. You can also buy on Amazon for relatively cheap. This is $20, and there are many others like it, like this one right here or this one right here. And there are many that you can uh, purchase. The Elgato one cost $160. So what's the difference between the HD60S and these capture cards uh, for the price difference? Um, so besides for the quality and the name brand that you're getting, what is the difference? So let's talk about two differences that um, you'll get uh, between these capture cards. First of all, this has pass-through. Pass-through means that uh, if I plug in the HDMI over here, and I plug in the HDMI over here, you'll be able to see um, the actual video um, that is being projected. So uh, if you need pass-through, then uh, this is a very good option uh, because you won't, you'll need something that passes through. There are also cheaper options for pass-through, but Elgato is the best. Um, and the reason why uh, you might want to buy Elgato over a random company is because um, Elgato can actually record at uh, 1080, whereas other companies may not be able to record at 1080. This one does 1080. Um, the 4K version does at 4K. It has 4K pass-through, pass but the recording can only be done at 1080, which is good enough for me, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to be happy with this. The HD60S uh, Plus, which sells for about $100 more, or in some cases $50 more, whatever it is, um, can actually record at 4K, I believe. Um, so that's the difference between uh, this one and these. These can only record at 1080, and they don't have pass-through. So I'm going to take a look at this. We're going to open them up and I'm going to show you what's inside. I just want to um, mention there are cheap ones like this one, for example, that I'm trying to show you without hold up right here. As you can see, there is an input and output, which means that it does have pass through and it does have a USB 3.0 and it also has audio and mic, which is actually pretty good. And the price for this one is just $23.90, which is a pretty good price. But as you can see right here, it can only capture at $1080. Um, I actually was able to buy this for, I think, uh, 60 to $70 on eBay used, so uh, definitely look out for deals. Now, these two capture cards um, actually both look like they have a very similar manual, user manual, HDI, HDMI video capture. They both look like they're um, pretty similar as far as uh, their uh, manufacturers. Very simple interface. Over here, you put the HDMI in, as you can see, and over here is the HDMI, uh, is the capture, um, the capture, uh, uh, I guess, output input, maybe, if you want to call it. Um, and, for example, on this box, it tells you all the specifications, the features, um, which will be the, probably the same for this one as well. Uh, so I'm going to show you that it works, how it works, and uh, just one more thing that I want to show you that uh, companies are very deceptive about. When I bought this, they said it's USB 3.0. Um, so let's take a look at the USB 3.0 that it has. First of all, this one is clearly USB 2.0. Um, they didn't even try to trick anyone because it's white. As you can see, there are four pins inside. And that's it, there's nothing else. And that shows that it is, in fact, USB 2.0. I'm gonna to try to uh, show some light. Right, four pins inside. Now let's look at this one over here. This one also only has four pins inside. As you can see, very clearly, only four pins. There are no more pins. I'm gonna to try to show you that more clearly. All right. In here, there are just four pins, nothing else. Okay, let's look at um, an actual USB 3.0 device. As you can see, there are five more pins inside. I'm not sure if you can see those pins. The pins that are sticking up. I'm trying to get that on video well. There are five more pins inside that give it that uh, 3.0 connection that lets you have that speed. This is another USB 3.0 device that has those pins. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but it has those extra pins inside you can tell a lot better when you're on top of it, but they are there. Um, so this one is blue to give it the impression that's USB 3.0, and in the um, in the listing it's at 3.0. It's not USB 3.0, and I believe that if it doesn't have USB 3.0, won't be able to transfer at 
anything higher than 720. So um, definitely be advised that you shouldn't be expecting anything higher than 720. Um, I don't even know if there's more than 40, so just keep that in mind. Here's a manual for the one that I have. If you want to pause and take a look, if you have something similar that you uh, don't have instructions for, um, or if you want to just see what it comes with. And this is Chinese, okay. It claims to support an output of 1080, but when I uh, actually plugged it in, um, I didn't see very good quality at 1080. It wasn't able to do like a very uh, high quality picture from what I saw. Here are the programs that are supported. Everyone knows OBS, but VLC and MCAP also are supported with, um, I'm guessing this very generic capture card. This one is almost the same exact uh, as far as instructions go. Uh, it tells you what it could do, but it's basically the same exact thing. So here's my Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to try it with my laptop. So we're gonna use this mini computer, the Raspberry Pi. First, we're gonna plug in power. Next, we're gonna plug in video output. Next, we're gonna plug it into the capture card. Okay, now that we have the Raspberry Pi connected over here, we're gonna to go to my laptop over here. And there we go. I'm gonna plug it into a USB 3.0 port, which is not gonna work, but I only have USB 3.0 ports on this laptop. Okay, it got connected, setting up. We're gonna open OBS over here. We're gonna power on the Raspberry Pi. That's the power button over here. We're gonna add the capture card. So let's add it in. Uh, video capture card. Okay. Nope, not integrated camera, USB video. Okay. And hopefully it'll work. And as you can see, it does work to capture uh, the, the video. Okay, video was a little weird there, but I was able to uh, just shrink it and make it work. Okay, I'm not sure how well you could see, but the mouse is working over here. Um, so as you can see, the capture card is working. Uh, it's able to uh, capture in real time. Let's see if I could try to make it work with VLC. So let me show you how it works with VLC. First of all, go to VLC player. Once VLC opens, you can go to open capture device over here in the default. Just go to your USB audio and go to USB digital audio and then just click play. And as you can see, um, it's showing. It is very low quality, but it is working and the mouse is working as well. So that's pretty cool. I actually never knew that you could do this, but uh, you can. So um, as you can see, the capture device works, but the quality was pretty low. Uh, there also is a nice amount of lag over here. Um, not a crazy amount, but there is, like you wouldn't be able to play a game through this for sure, or use the computer well at all. And now uh, the device is shutting down. So let's stop this recording and let's go see how that recording turned out. So this recording is not bad. Uh, definitely not amazing quality, but enough that I could totally see what's going on. Um, the quality is, I would say it's around 720, but it claims it's 1080, so let's check what quality it is actually. Okay, so um, Handbrake is telling me that the quality was uh, 720, but that could be because I was using um, a Pi. Uh, so that could be it, you never know. But as you can see over here, um, it is 1.16 megabytes for 26 seconds, which is, it's a small file. Um, I don't know if you'll get higher quality uh, with maybe a desktop computer. You should be able to get 1080 maybe. Um, but anyway, um, I hope this helped you in some way, uh, my experience. I would definitely recommend getting one of these if you um, if you need something uh, to capture your video, um, which I do uh, pretty frequently actually. Uh, but um, at 720, uh, you know, for seven dollars, definitely worth the price. Um, and if you are looking to uh, have something passed through for your Xbox or something, I would recommend that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, you could have possibly one HDMI going into here and one, one HDMI going into your monitor, and then it should work out fine. But if not, you might want to pass through. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.